Let's get that on. And what's up with this? Yeah, take that off. I say good afternoon to all the brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. Brother Willie Walton. Tasha is real. Twidwell. Nicole JM. Shalom. Mahalia. Mahalia. Well, I guess now that now that the turkey day is over, I guess uh, <laughs> our brothers will be ready to move right on in to uh, Frosty the Snowman era. But <laughs> that was another couple of people come on here. <laughs> I hope everybody doing good. Yeah. I hope everybody going. Thank, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. <laughs> uh, I said, boy, I know. I've been losing friends, uh, Facebook friends, all week long. And I ain't mad at it neither. I am not mad at it at all. Mm, I need to make some room. Every now and then we get the opportunity to thin out the herd by getting on people's nerves, especially the hypocrites. Because uh, all of us at some point, all of us got some hypocriticalness in us. But anyway, I wanted to come on here dealing with a post that I had put on there earlier. And my post was this, is that, let, let me say this for brothers and sisters that tend to try to make mountains out of molehills by by pretending that they don't that they don't understand what it is that you're saying. Listen, I say this all over again, and in the days to come, we are going to do a set of videos. They're going to be teaching videos. I'm not saying that what people saying about the holidays ain't true. They're absolutely right. I'm not saying that they're not true. My thing is how you go about trying to get those points across to your brothers and sisters. 99, 98% of the time, brothers trying to get those points across to their brothers and sisters from a super hypocritical standpoint. And it's based on just stuff that they done went on Google and found out or something like that. But but I think that if it's a way that you can do everything, and for the brothers that are able to, if you really want to make a difference when it comes to Dealing with the holiday issues such as Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter. You should glean all of the information that you can come up with. And you should glean everything that you can come up with from a scriptorial standpoint. And then you should do a live video. Do make it more of a teaching thing so that people can be able to comprehend what's being said instead of just brightly oh miss me with all that paganism anybody to call and say happy thanksgiving to me I'm, I'm blocking them delete yourself from my page see that's some bullshit whenever y'all get through if you feel that way you can keep that to yourself because as we said before if the things that other people are out there doing are not no direct offense against you you don't have no business putting your mouth on nobody. If it's something that you decide not to do because you have came to this place of conviction, have at it. Thank the Most High for your enlightenment and then live by that. But don't you become an offense to somebody that's not bothering you. And nine out of ten times, those are the things that, that happen. And those are kind of the things that we be trying to point out. Now, some people try to make it as though... We saying, well, you know, you got some, you got some, some of these people out there teaching that you supposed to go and, and celebrate with your family while they in the midst of wickedness. No, ain't nobody teaching you to do no such thing. Because if you really been delivered from a thing, it don't make no difference what nobody else is celebrating. You can still do what you gonna do. 
If the Most High done delivered you, that is if you've been delivered from something genuinely. So, I wanted to say those things what we're not saying before we say what we are saying. And in the days to come, I plan to do video on a teaching video on the origin of Thanksgiving, and Black Friday, Christmas, New Year, Easter. And I'm going to also do some teachers on some of these, what they call holy days, that people are so adamant about keeping. Whether they, they're ones that, 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 that the Most High get glory from because you're keeping them, or whether they, or we're also going to do some things on the things that we're not keeping that we should be keeping. So I think that the whole thing that, uh, I think that the, 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 the major thing is that when you're trying to bring information to people, you got to present it to them in, in sort of a teaching fashion to where they can understand what's being said. And then on top of that, you, you can't just go and volunteer the information that you have. People have to be receptive to what it is that you mm -hmm. offer. So you get most of your resistance from people that don't want to hear nothing about that. Okay, so if I don't want to hear nothing about Thanksgiving being pagan, why are you going to constantly put it in my face? If the Bible tells us don't cast those things that's good into the dogs, and then we have a habit of trying to put everything on the most high. Like, what well, the, the most high, we, we supposed to go out here, and we supposed to go out and teach this, we supposed to go out and, you know what, you're supposed to teach men to observe the things that Yeshua Hamashiach taught his disciples. He didn't teach his disciples nothing about no Thanksgiving, nothing about no Christmas, nothing about no man-made paganistic holidays because none of them things ever even existed. But they seem to cause a whole lot of rifting. And I, I credit that, I attribute that to our brothers that classify themselves as Hebrew Israelites because, man, our brothers that classify themselves as Hebrew Israelites are some of the spookiest jokers on the planet. And, and that's just what it is. So, you know, how you use what it is that you've been given. But as I said before, I think one of the important things is that if you got two people, you got two people, one person is over here doing one thing and you over here doing something else. Let's hypothetically say this person over here is celebrating and you over here, you're not celebrating. This person over here, they celebrating. I don't see how in the world it can have an effect on somebody that's not celebrating. So if that be the case, how would somebody that's not celebrating going to always be over there becoming an offense to somebody else that's celebrating? So that's the whole thing, and that's the whole point that's being made. Now, we got some self-righteous people out there that they hate messages such as the ones that we done put on there because it robs them of being able to have anything. It literally takes the hammer out of people's hand. So, if you got those convictions in that particular area, then I think it's a terrible thing for you to block somebody or befriend somebody that's celebrating Thanksgiving. That's a terrible thing. Because the only difference that's separating the two of you is one of you have been exposed to information that you don't know, and the other one is still operating in ignorance. Now, I was. I remember me and one of my daughters had this big issue where I had to go down one side and up one other side when we first start coming into truth and start understanding all of these things. And that year, that year Christmas rolled around. And I happened to look at Facebook and she's on there talking about, uh, I, I don't celebrate no Christmas. I, Christmas is pagan and this and that and the other. While her grandpa... And her mama and everybody was wishing her Merry Christmas. You see, she come into information that they ain't came into. Now you're going to take the information and start being disrespectful to the people that love you. And I say, you know what? People ain't even got to call you. They ain't got to think about you. They ain't got to think enough about you. This is the thing that our brothers and sisters don't understand. You throw dirt in the face of somebody that just have a thought about you. And they don't know nothing about the information that you're learning, but yet and still... I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. So what we did is since the Thanksgiving holiday is over now, 
And all of the Thanksgiving and the turkey posts and all of that stuff have been lashed out at the brothers and sisters. All of those that are celebrating have been uncovered and stripped butt naked and been displayed and paraded before the world as being in wickedness. Since all of that is over, we put the post on there saying now that all of that is over. Now that we have exposed everybody else's sin through the heathenistic holidays. Now how about we come on here and expose our own sin. Let's parade our own sin around on social media. The way we parade other people's uh, sin around. Now you know when we did them videos. We, we got over a combined total <clears throat> of almost 700 views on those videos. And we got uh, probably... A fourth of them are people warring back and forth with their negativity because they don't want to digest what's being said. Okay? So we got all of that on this particular post here. We got 13 comments and then we got 8 people that shared what was being said and we got 49 people that reacted to it. So in all actuality... You see, when it comes to looking at and tearing down and pulling the cover off what somebody else is doing, we don't have no problem with that. But the Most High also calls us, it's in the Bible too, confess your faults one to another that your prayers may be, that you may be healed. See, see that's in the book too. We, see, we, we don't have no problem parading other people sitting around. But you mean tell me, out of all the people that watch these videos, we only got 13 people on there that'll come on there and say, Yep, I confess, I'm struggling with anger. Yep, I confess, I got some struggles in my flesh. They don't have to go into detail. We know the struggles in the flesh is of the flesh. It could be smoking, it could be drinking, it could be fornicating, it could be, you know, we know what struggles of the flesh is. We got some other brothers and sisters that say, yep, you know what, I come on there, I ain't married, and you know what, and I got this time, and, and I find myself angry. And, and uh, creating a lot of frustration on Facebook. I come on there and I confess my father and say, hey, look, I confess that I'm a mourner. I am a mourner. Contrary to how happy people may think I am or how happy people may see me, I am a mourner. I am a mourner. The reason why I mourn on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis is because no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to fix my life and make it what I want it to be. I can teach the word and I can preach the word and I can see people get blessed and I can see people get healed and I can see people's uh, lives change. But minds, I can't fix my own life. You see, and you can give people wisdom and they can go out and do this and do that. And then you know what? And then you find out, well, OK, if I can do it for them, why it don't work for me? Because every day I wake up. And look in the mirror. I see something that is wrong with me. Something that 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 I could be a little bit better at. Something that I need to overcome. And it creates a mourning in me because I'm feeling like, you know what? I just want to be perfect and righteous in the eyes of the Father. But that's not what I see when I wake up in the morning. And it creates a mourning. That's my sin. That's my confession. And it don't make no difference because if you mourn on a daily basis, that means you going, you enter into, you, you got one sin overtaking you after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. You overcome one, there's another one you got to deal with. You get that one out of the way, there's another one you got to deal with. And it makes you mourn because you said, man, Father, why I got to keep going through the same stuff over and over and over again? We got... Some brothers and sisters that came on and said, hey, you know, I need, I need grace and I need mercy. You know what I'm saying? I'm struggling with gluttony. You know, I eat too much. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm full already. I ain't even hungry. You know what I'm saying? But I just can't, I can't keep my head out the icebox. Every time I turn around, I got to be sticking something in my mouth and I ain't even hungry. And I eat until I'm literally full till my stomach just feel like it's about to explode. You see, we have some brothers and sisters that are willing, that were willing to come on and confess their faults. Because that's what this walk is all about. This walk is not about being able to confess the faults of somebody else celebrating Thanksgiving and somebody else celebrating Christmas. You got to be able to confess the faults and the sins that you are dealing with. Can you confess the things and the areas in your life that are out of balance in the way? 
that you can deal with anybody else's sin? When people going to get it? When people going to get it? And they show a picture of people with blacks with chains on. When they going to get about Black Friday? When they going to get about... Forget about when they going to get about Black Friday. Do you have... Can you confess the areas of your life that have not been fixed yet in the same manner that you can look at other people's areas that they ain't been fixed in? You see? And so I want to applaud all of the brothers and sisters, even though it wasn't that many. It wasn't but 13 of them. But I know dang gone well ain't nobody in the planet going to tell me that out of all the people in the world, that out of all the people that watch these videos, that there's only 13 people that ain't got nothing in their life that they need to confess. Guess what? For everybody that came on that, them 13 people that came on that post and confessed their sin, guess what? The book says confess your fault one to another that you may be healed. Those people that had the humility enough to confess their faults live on social media, guess what? They're going to be healed. You know why? Because those that heard other brothers' faults being confessed, now are going to go and pray for them. So everybody that was on that post, we're going to now pray for all of the 13 people that was on there confessing their faults. And guess what? Those 13 people, they're going to be healed in the days to come of the things that they can confess. But look at the other. Look at the other thousand people that we got to be watching the videos who are content with having the same habit, with having the same sin. And as we said before, the sin that they had, they had Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. And now Thanksgiving gone. They still got the same sin on Friday. And chances are they'll have the same sin all throughout the year. They can't get that out their mouth. But they don't have no problem talking about what other people are doing. It's no different than just little children. I remember when my kids was little, I used to tell them, I used to tell them, they don't always want to tell on each other. Not, 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 not. Before you can tell me what your brother says, tell me what you did. Because I didn't want to hear nothing else. I don't want to hear about what other people are doing. I want to hear what you're doing. You tell me what you did. And if you ain't done nothing, then you ain't got no reason standing in my face. So get out here and go play. Don't come trying to tell me what your brother did, what your sister did. No, what did you do? What did you do? If you ain't did nothing, all right, go play. I'm the same way. Just like now. I want to hear nothing about what other people are doing. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you did. Because we got some we got some people and some brothers and sisters that they can't wait to get on the phone and tell you everything that somebody else did. I don't want to hear what everybody else did. I want to hear what you did. See, because the things that other people are doing, they don't they don't pose as no transgression against me. What people are doing, they have to be accountable for those things in their own life. And we have to be accountable for the things in our own life. Every man got to give an account for his own life. So why would anybody waste time thinking about what somebody else is doing? If you got something solid to teach or to preach out of the scripture, then you teach that thing and then let the word of the Most High do what it's supposed to do. Don't go the extra mile putting yourself in there. Well, you know, I did this or I did that. Mm. So... Yeah, that would be, uh, that's, uh, Yaheli, uh, Hey Johnson says, I post something asking for us to testify on Tuesday, uh, to free or encourage our people. It was to no avail. You see, and that's what it is. Boy, get out of there. Walk, come get them, because I think that oven is on. Yeah, and it's to no avail, because, see, people don't take no pleasure out of that. Ain't nobody got nothing to testify. Because in order for you to have a testimony, you understand what I'm saying, then you have to bring people to the place to, uh, where you uncover your own wretchedness. And your own wretchedness is either something that the Most High is having mercy and compassion on you for, or either your wretchedness is something that he brought you out of and dealt with. But when we start talking about things of that nature, people don't want to do that. Everybody want to show themselves as, as picture portraits of strength. Never mind that the book says that the most high strength is made manifest in weakness. And those that can humble themselves, they shall be exalted. But the ones that's going out there exalting themselves like they got it all together, they, you, you're the one that's going to be abased. So, so it's all good, uh, Angela, y'all, Israel. And what we was trying to do is that 
Not only are we trying to redirect our brothers and sisters' mindset into where they need to put their energy at. We was trying to redirect the mindset into where they need to put their energy at. And, and, and you need to put your energy in your own life as an individual. Every time, every time you allow your eyes to go outside of your life and start looking at something that your brother or your sister is doing, then guess what? Then you in you in you in failure, because your life is not getting the necessary attention that it needs. You see, all of our lives have a level of shame involved. Show me a brother that don't have no shame, and guess who? I show you. I show you the man that's out there sleeping on the corner that's homeless, because he's the only one that don't have no shame. You see, because his shame is uncovered. The people that have shame, their shame is covered up where can't nobody see it. That's why the Bible says there are three chief things in life. Food and water, clothing, and a house to cover a man's shame. So you show me a man that has a house that he lives in, I'll show you a man that has shame. Now, as we said before, when you start talking about somebody that's homeless, sleeping up under a bridge, they don't have no shame. Because their shame is uncovered. You see? But shame is what's covered up that other people can't see. And we don't want to deal with or we don't want to talk about those things. However, it's something terribly wrong with you when you are comfortable and content with uncovering somebody else's shame who the Most High have covered up. And you can go and uncover their shame, and then you have shame too, but you want to remain covered up. Yeah, you know, this is a, uh, it's walk or something. It's walk or something. Willie Walton says, that's right, I've been praying to the Most High to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And all of us should be praying that same prayer because we have a desire to, to live a life of righteousness. But sometimes we don't understand is that we could easily become unrighteous. And when the most highest thing, like 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 many of our brothers and sisters don't don't want to believe that they are committing unrighteous acts. When they're looking at other people's faults and what other people are doing and then putting their mouth on that, that's an unrighteous act. Because Hamashiach says the love covers a multitude of faults. Instead of uncovering your brother, you should be covering your brother up, covering him with your prayers. Father, I know that, that my family, they, they still lost. They still lost. I'm going to pray for them. That, pray for them that in the days to come that you'll lighten the eyes of their understanding, that you'll help them see, you know what I mean? And, and, and give me a spirit to be able to discern if what I'm going to use on them it's going to build them up or if it's going to tear them down, if it's going to draw them more close to me or if it's going to drive them away from me. See, most time we're not even in communion with the Father as it relates to how we're going to use certain things. We just blatantly go out there and do it and we don't realize that we have committed unrighteous acts against the Most High by the way that we treat our brothers and sisters. Nobody's saying that you got to participate in nothing. Nobody's saying that you got to join in with nobody's foolishness. But if you're not going to participate and you're not going to join in with nobody's foolishness, you ought to at least give place enough to the Most High to do His work by keeping your mouth closed. Because you say, I ain't going to participate, but every time Thanksgiving or Christmas come out of your mouth, you have already participated. Because it's you that's bringing forth these things, while other people ain't even meddling with you. They're minding their business in the lost state that they're in. You can commit unrighteous acts like that. And so, um, that's one of the things that we're going to be praying for. Um, um, uh, your Heli, hey Johnson, is that, uh, yeah. Uh, she says, you're right, brother. I'm trying to smoke cigarettes. Well, I understand I understand that. That's been a battle for a long time for me. You know what I mean? And I've, I stopped smoking them cigarettes for about three or four months. You know what I'm saying? And um, the next thing I know, you know what I mean? I, hey, I miss a cigarette. I, every now and then I find myself taking a puff off a cigarette or, or set me a limit. Man, maybe I just smoke one. Maybe I just smoke two today. And if I start having me some wine or something like that or have me a couple of mixed drinks, it make me want to smoke too. So, 
you know, so those are things that we we want to see the Most High help us to overcome in our life. And these are many things that we got many things in our lives that we ain't even paying attention to because we're too busy looking at what somebody else is doing. And just imagine how the Most High is looking at you. Just imagine how you looking at us when we're doing that. So this ain't even about. It's not even about no holidays. It's just that when the holidays come around, it gives a nice good platform to use to boomerang back. Yep. Yep. Well, Angela, y'all, you know, you always around anyway, you know, and that that was a, I put that post on there this morning. I put that post on there this morning because, you know, I said now that we now that we threw running our brothers and sisters down for celebrating the day that they came and gone, let's see how many of us can can can, can bring to the table and confess some of the sins that been in our life throughout the year. That was in our life before the holiday came and they they in our life after Thanksgiving is gone, they'll be in your life before Christmas. And then after Christmas is gone, they'll still be there. And they'll be there before New Year's. And then after New Year's is gone, they'll still be there. And they'll still be there before Easter roll around. And then they'll be there after Easter roll around. And you ain't still ain't overcame or conquered that thing. You see, when we can get people to redirect their attention there and start confessing their own faults, Instead of being quick to confess the faults of others, you know, then we'll be working on something. Because every person, every person that's handling that book is in need of the Most High's mercy. He said the Most High's mercy is new every day. If we wasn't in need of the Most High's mercy on a daily basis, why would he have to renew it every single day? Every single day his mercy is new. You see? And then you got to ask yourself, you said, I'm, Tim Bailey says, I'm dealing with flesh issues. Pray, my brother. Well, you know, Tim Bailey, you're not by yourself because all of us are dealing with flesh issues. You got to understand that the Most High formed us out of the lowest detestable thing on the earth, out of dust. And there is no good thing that you can do with dust. If you take dust and pick it up from a baseball diamond, now your hands is dirty. If you put it in your pocket, your pocket's dirty. If you wipe your hands on your clothes, your clothes is dirty. If you take the dust home and try to clean it up with soap and water, now the sink is dirty. The bathtub is dirty. Every day you get in the bathtub, dirt comes off of you. You see, there is no good thing that resides in the flesh, so we're all struggling with sins in the flesh. But... All thanks to the Most High that the Messiah said that uh, we would not struggle with anything, any temptation except that that was common to the fallen nature of the fleshly man. So we should thank the Most High because there are some things that are not common to the fleshly man. I remember I, I, remember I learned this from Young General. I called Young General one night. And I just so beat down, you know what I mean? And I start pouring out, young gentleman. Man, I don't know why I keep, I can't overcome this, man. And I just, and he just ran back and said, hey, 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 Elder, 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 that ain't nothing, boy, that ain't nothing. Boy, y'all to be rejoicing, y'all to be rejoicing and being glad. <laughs> you think that's something? Check this out, Elder, check this out. He said, Hamashiach hey, ha, 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 said, there is no temptation that's taken except that is common to man. And then he laughed. <laughs> Yeah, elder, yeah, 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 yeah. You say he say yeah, cause see your sins are common to man. The, the, the things you doing, they common. They what we all get tangled up in. He said, well, let me show you something, elder, so you can break out rejoicing. He said homosexuality ain't common to man. He said, you know what, a murderous spirit ain't common to man. Pedophilia ain't common to man. He said, it is a bunch of sins out there that's not common to man. So you can rejoice in the sins that you are dealing with that are common to man, because the Most High have kept us. From sins that are not common to the flesh of man. That cause us to go into a place of condemnation. Because we are tempted by things on a daily basis that are common to man and our flesh yields to it. The Most High said, my mercy is renewed on a daily basis. So, so you be encouraged, uh, Tim Bailey. Shalom, Prince, the mighty Hebrew. 
So that's, you know, and I'm, I'm saying to myself that we don't have no perfect people in the world. You know what I mean? I don't, we shouldn't go out of our way trying to tear people down, you know? And I, and I think that, uh, you know, sometimes when we had those type of spirits, it's us that's, we, we the ones that's uh, against the most high. We the ones that's operating against the most high. Yep, yep. All praise is mighty Hebrew. All praise is young prince. I seen the post. I seen that post today, man. All praises. All praises. All praises. Bless the most high for the young prince, mighty Hebrew. Um, man, his wife is about to have a baby. That's something to be rejoicing about. That's something to be rejoicing about. See, and that's what I'm talking about. So let me show you what I'm talking about. When the Bible talks about all of these things that's going to unfold in the future to the generation whose heart has been sealed to the Most High. You see, when you start talking about, like mighty Hebrew talking about his wife about to have a baby, that baby ain't going to come up knowing. He's not going to have no struggle trying to stop eating pork chops. Ain't going to have no struggle. Trying to stop doing a lot of things that we struggle with right now because we have learned the ways of the heathen. But even as we trying to purge ourselves, many of us will die with some of the sins that we have. But as we teach the next generation, they won't even be exposed to it. You see, the, my grandkids, they won't even know what it's like to fight not eating flesh and blood. They won't even know what it's like to fight that. Because they not being exposed to it. We could expose it to them. But they ain't going to know what it's like. To have to fight to get over that. They not going to know what it's like. In a lot of different areas where we have been exposed to. When we teach that next generation of children. They will not be exposed to the things that. We, they, they ain't got to be exposed to. Being the slaves. Of these people over here in the Americas. They can just be straight exposed to the royal priesthood that they are and be trained and brought up from birth right that and when they see how the world hates them they won't have an inferiority complex they'll have a, a, a they'll have a sense of pride and dignity because they know that they're hated not because they was a slave but because from birth they've been taught that they're the greatest people on the world and that and they've been taught their responsibility from birth so like I said, when we start dealing with all this other stuff that's mediocre, meaningless stuff, it don't add no righteousness to people. You see? Me coming into truth back in the 90s and not celebrating Christmas, it didn't bring me into no righteousness. It didn't bring me into no righteousness. It just made me understand that this what I was doing was wrong. This wasn't, this wasn't right. This wasn't our custom. So we was able to put it down. It didn't make me no more righteous than I was. It sure didn't make me no more righteous when I used to go around my family. Oh, man, that, that, that Christmas is pagan. That Christmas is heathen. Take. No, that made me more wicked. Because I allowed what I had learned to now cause me to become a stumbling block to the people that hadn't learned the same thing. Now, all of you brothers and sisters can be stubborn if y'all want to and reject the truth when it comes. That, that's just what it is. And it's real simplistic. So... So, yeah, uh, that's what that is. Yep. See, we got to be about our father's business. And the only way we're going to be about our father's business is that we have to get our business right with the father. You ain't getting your business right with the father while you meddling with me. And then let's show you something else. I'm starting to learn this, too. That's why I don't, I don't respond to too many people's stuff. I don't go to too many people's pages no more or nothing because I ain't got time to argue with nobody. You know what I'm saying? And when I do go to people's posts, I be telling them, boy, that's the funniest thing I done heard, boy. I got to share this. Uh, that's 100% right. I gravitate toward the things that I agree with or the things that I can identify with. I stopped so much going to posts. Let's, this is a lesson that's going to be good for Israel. Stop going to comment on people's posts that you don't agree with. You can't go over there 
Grab your brother by the ear and say you're doing God's will. It ain't God. God already got whoever he wants you to minister to. You know what I mean? It's time out for brothers using that weak, lame excuse that they're doing the Father's will. Because if you're doing the Father's will, then you're gonna have, you're gonna you're gonna do things towards your brother in the way that the Father have done it. You're not going to nobody's post with no sarcasm or just flat out. That's just a bold faced lie. That's a, you. You know what? You could put your positive energy someplace else. Book of Proverbs say, he that meddle with affairs that don't belong to them is like a man that take a dog by the ears. Everybody got a Facebook page. Their name is on that page. Just like your name could be on the office of a door. It may be a social media platform. It may be a public thing. You understand what I'm saying? But it's still their particular page. And it would do us some good. We could cut down on a whole lot of nonsense and have more cohesiveness if we simply just gravitated more toward the things that we can encourage. But man, that was a good post right there. Man, that was good. If you don't like what somebody did, that ain't no thing to say you need to respond. So quit using the most high for an excuse. Oh, no, we got to we gotta correct this stuff. Oh, no, we got to correct. You ain't got to correct nothing. Because the most high don't need any of us to do anything. For, for, for 400, 500 years, we have been in total, complete darkness. And all out of nowhere, we started waking up. Who do you think was responsible for that? That's right. The Most High was responsible for that. So what make you think if the Most High is responsible for waking you up, that now it's all of a sudden your responsibility to what? Well, if it was your responsibility to wake everybody up, where you been for the last four, five hundred years? So, so you know, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so we all, and that's why right, we all have our faults. Let, let's, let's check this, Francis. We got we got our young prince on there. We got Prince Shar Landron, uh, uh Yashrala Singer. He is also known in the social media world, and he's also known in the world that we are living in. It, but his social media, we go by the name of the Mighty Hebrew. Our the Mighty Hebrew is one of our beloved brothers, but the Mighty Hebrew, he is Torah sinner. Do you think because he is Torah centered, have ever stopped us from walking together as brothers? Do you think because he's the bulk of his energy is centered around co Torah, Constitution, and Torah law, and Torah governmental things, uh, the things that were instituted, of uh, the culturalistic things of our forefathers? Do you think? Because he spends no energy dealing with Yeshua HaMashiach and the 12 apostles and this and that and the other. Do you think that that's a reason why we can't be brothers? Are you kidding me? You see? Because he don't know anything that the Most High ain't allowed him to be exposed to. And I don't know anything that the Most High have allowed me to be exposed to. And there was a point to where neither one of us knew anything, whether it was about Torah Constitution or whether it was about Yeshua HaMashiach. There was a particular time, a moment in time to where we didn't know anything about any of it. Yet we were brothers. I just don't get it. We find all types of reasons in the world to allow our differences of perspectives to separate us or to cause us to lash out at one another. When in actuality, the only thing that each one of us need is a mirror. You see, the Ten Commandments is nothing more than a mirror. It's nothing more than a mirror. Because when it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that means that you are looking at the relationship between you and the Most High. And he said, in order for you to do this, you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So when you want to know what it's like to start loving yourself and understand what it means to love the Most High, when we look at the commandments, we have to stand in front of the mirror. Thou shall not kill. And then look at yourself and say, would I kill myself? No, I wouldn't. Then I shouldn't kill my brother. But the Messiah came along and said, 
Thou shall not kill, but you can murder with your mouth. You look in the mirror and say, well, I murder myself with my own mouth. Here's the evidence that you wouldn't murder yourself with your own mouth because to murder your brother with your mouth is to pour out all of his secrets and all of his faults and all of his shortcomings and to undress those things before him uh, publicly as a means to assassinate his character and to kill his influence. And by that standpoint, you become a murderer with your mouth. But when you look in the mirror, you say, man, you know what? Man, shit. I just smoked a crack last night. Do I want to go out and tell everybody that? And kill my influence and kill my character and all that? Nope, I wouldn't do that. Man, I just committed adultery on my wife. Man, would I go out and murder myself? Man, I'm in the ministry. I'm doing ministry on social media. People looking up. Would I go out and pour all my business out like that? The type of business that would kill my character and my influence? You say, nope. He said, well, if you wouldn't do it to yourself, don't do it to your brother. Thou shall not steal. Get a mirror. Because it's not always about physically stealing. Would I steal from myself? No, nah, you wouldn't steal from yourself. You see? Then why would you steal from somebody else? Now, the Bible in the book of Hebrews, I mean, not Hebrews, but Jeremiah, he said, Woe to them that steal my words from my people. Would you steal from yourself? You say no. But your brother can be doing a video, and it could be plenty of people learning from it. And you can see one thing that you agree with, and then you'll come in with a bunch of bull crap. And begin now to become a thief. Because you steal the father's people's word every time you distract people. from, And they start looking at nonsense and his word going forth and they miss it. You became a thief. You see, when we start looking at the script for what it really is, it's all about how we dealing with each other. Thou shall not bear false witness. Would you get it? Would you do that bear false witness on yourself? Would you call the police and then tell them that? You just committed a crime somewhere? Would you call the police and tell them that you riding down the, uh, the, the main street and you got guns in the car? Would you bear false witness against yourself? Why would you bear false witness against your brother? Man, you know what? I heard such and such told me that. Such a, You know, every time you relate a piece of information that you heard from somebody else, you're bearing false witness because you don't know whether it's true or not. So when we start looking at these things, we always have to start looking at ourselves first because it's us that the Most High want to get the glory out of as individuals. It's us that he wants to use, you see? And we spend a lot of time dealing with so many different other things that the Most High don't even get the necessary time. Look at this joke. Every time I turn around, he's talking about the Most High this. you how with that. you how with that. But this joker ain't got no time to spend with me because he's so consumed with everybody else's business and what everybody else is doing. So, yep. Yep. All praises. So that's kind of that's kind of where we was going with that stuff. And, uh, okay, we got Brother D. Sanders. That's uh, 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 Brother D. Big Brother D out of Yahshua the Movement. He said, I tend to worry about things I cannot control, knowing I must have faith in all things. See, and that's uh, why all praises to the Most High. Because we know that, that uh, even though we have scriptures in there, don't mean that we don't struggle with things. But he said, take no thought in what you should eat, what you should drink, wherewith you shall be clothed. For the Heavenly Father knows that we have need of all of these things. You see? He said, so why worry? How can worrying add one stature, one inch to your stature? Can worry do anything? And see, he let know, we know these things from the scripture. But it don't always stop it from happening because we are prone by temptations of the flesh. Yes, we know the Most High is going to provide. Yes, we know that the Most High is going to take care of us. But you know what? I got two letters in the mail. Property taxes. You see what I'm saying? No money. We know the Most High is going to provide. But when it come like that. And you don't have what you need to take care of it. You just automatically tend to worry a little bit.
But as we say it, these are some of the things that confession is good for the soul because it gives the brothers and sisters something to pray about. And all of us need prayer. But you wonder why our prayers don't get answered because we don't operate in prayer according to the way that we should operate in prayer. The Most High have tied us together. When you start praying for your brother, that is an unselfish prayer. That is a prayer of righteousness. That is a prayer of faith. And the Most High said because of that, your brother going to get healed. And that's how we all work together with cohesiveness. But it's hard to pray for somebody that you can't stand. It's hard to pray for somebody that you just got through arguing with. It's hard to pray for somebody that just cussed you out. You understand what I'm saying? So we'll have to find a way to minimize all of these uh, mediocre things that's, that's, you know, that's keeping us in a bad place. All uh, praise is mighty Hebrew said, this is why I will always love you, Elder Dimitri, because you always seen that all of us have work to do. All of us have work to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is, man. It said, and you never made it seem as if you were better than any of us. All praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? Because, and that's, a, you know, that's because I realized one thing. I seem, I esteem myself as the least, as the least of the brethren. Because, because I'm older, I probably had more hang-ups. And he probably got more hang-ups right now than anybody. And that's probably why the Father uh, comforts me with, with giving me uh, things to say. And he comforts me with his spirit. And so when that comes out, it's like people look and they say, oh, wow, they blessed. But you don't know every blessing that comes is born out of my failure and out of my heartache and out of my pain. And I literally go into a place of righteous indignation, being at war with the, with the Satan that I don't have the power to defeat. I've nursed myself into the mindset that if I can just get to my brothers and sisters and stop them from getting tricked by this, then, then that'll be enough for me. You done whoop me all my life, and you might continue to whoop me because I'm at the mercy of the Most High. And if you whooping me, he's allowing you to whoop me. But, boy, if I have anything to do with it, when I get through releasing this video, you ain't never going to be able to get this off on my brothers and sisters. That's my mindset. And then I know that I'm at the Most High's mercy. I'm at the Most High's mercy. And that is why I, have to, that is why I personally try to have a heart of mercy and a heart of of compassion toward people, even when they're in the midst of being wrong, because I have been dead wrong so many times in my life that it is just unbelievable. You're talking about somebody that can go in there and look in the mirror, sometimes don't even want to look in the mirror, but you're talking about somebody that can go and look in the mirror, and, you stupid mother, what are you doing, why do you keep doing the same stuff over and over and over? I have seen the most high exercise mercy and compassion. Sometimes I ask him, man, I'm still alive. Why you didn't let me just die in my sleep? If, is this mockery that you keep waking me up every day and then putting your word in my mouth and sending me out there to deliver a message that everybody else going to get blessed on and then only for me to end up right back here on my face? See, no, nobody really know what you go through when eyes ain't looking, you know? And I don't have no problem because to be able to tell those things, they keep me where I'm supposed to be. So, and that's probably where we got, that's probably where we got our common ground from. You know, we, we really generally have hearts to do good, but we have done so much wrong in our life. And still, even though you have a heart to do good, you can still find yourself doing wrong anyway but the most high is faithful and the most high is merciful and uh and, and i just like you know when we confess those things it's good for us because it helps us to empty ourselves of the cares of this world and the things that we are feeling and it helps us to empty ourselves of uh you know of that failure that will otherwise have you walking around depressed and feeling guilty and all that when well, you know what when i don't when i can't talk about the stuff that i'm going through 
I'd be depressed. I don't want to get out. I don't want no one, no light in the room, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I have to talk about it, and and I have to make videos. You know what I mean? Because it helped me to to get it out my system. So I don't know if any other other brothers or like that as well. Uh, but it's it's all right. It's all right because we mortal men. I want our brothers and sisters to redirect their attention. And take your attention off your brother. And the only way you're supposed to be focusing your attention on your brother is for two reasons. Either your brother come and knock on your door and ask you, Hey man, I know you ain't eating no turkey. And I know that it just don't seem the same when the days. What's going on, man? Just tell me something. Explain your thought process to me so I can understand. So I, I'm feeling some type of way right now. And then you can sit your brother down and you can say, you know what, I ain't going to tell him. I'm going to show him whatever brought me to that understanding. That's what I would do here. That's one way that you focus on your brother. The other way you focus on your brother is to just go in your closet. Oh, most high, have mercy on them. Oh, most high, have mercy on them. I know you got the power to show them what you showed me. You got the power to do that. If you're doing anything other than them two things right there, you're going to be the one that's got the problem. Okay? You're going to be the one that's got the problem. You know? And so, um, i tell you a story. i tell you a dream that I had one day, and I know that dreams don't. We don't really pay attention to dreams, but it's a dream that I had one day. And it shook me it shook me up. It shook me up. And then it sent me on it sent me on a stretch of time where I started experiencing a particular thing. I was dreaming that I had I had died. And I was going to be I was going into the kingdom. The gates and everything was there. But it was a little distance. And it was massive bodies of people there and I'm going and the closer I got to the people the more they faces started to come to the closer I got the more familiar the faces was getting and the gates was opening as I was coming and they was looking baffled because they was like well there's me he's on his way in and so eventually people started you know, touching me and grabbing me. And, well, you going in there? You going in there? You you going in there? Why why we ain't going in there? You, you going in there? And, and then it was explanation time because one they understand. Well, why why you why you going in? And I ain't answer the door. Well, I'm about to bed. Hold on. Who's that, mom? Yeah. They said, why you going in? And then I ain't. They said, look, man, we, we was in grade school, all through grade school together. Why, why are you going, what did you know that I didn't know? And they said, uh, uh, you know, you know, we was best buddies. We spent the night at each other's house. We ate off the same plate. We were roller skating together. Man, we kicked it the whole time. We spent all this time together. How can you be going in and I'm not going in? And that dream shook me. And when I got up from that dream... I had a made up mind that the people that I loved, I would never allow myself to be around them and not be in a position to where I couldn't relate the information or the things that I knew as it related to the things pertaining to the most high. And so, but there was a stretch in time that that dream was driving me to really become a destructive force because I didn't understand. Who was going to receive the word? Who wasn't ready for the word? I didn't understand none of those things because some of the people that was there pulling on me was people that I had drew to conclusion in my mind they was never going to change. So I never said nothing. Some of them was those people I had just drew the conclusion in my mind. Man, if I start telling them this, they ain't going to like me no more. So I never did. But now, in this particular case, I, I wasn't able to draw lines of distinction between the difference. So I was just point blank, period. Everybody was getting the word. Everybody's getting hit with the sword. If you can handle it, you can handle it. You can't, you hit with it. You over there bleeding. And I went on an escapade of that for years to the point to where people didn't want to even see me coming. 
And I eventually had to go back and reevaluate it. So what happened is that I was being so hard on people with the word that the Most High sent the Spirit to me one day and said, listen, these are my people. I didn't give you this word so that you can become a destructive force for my people. He said, I gave you this word so that you can build them up. But you have to be able to use discernment. You have to be. A, so it, it sent me back into the word so that I can have an understanding of who was going to receive the most high's word and who wasn't. And who was uh, able to understand it and who wasn't able to understand it. How to be able to tell the difference between a child and a mature person. How to be able to tell the difference between a devil and, and, and a child. You see what I'm saying? So you, you went back in there and you had all different type of, of scriptures that led you in that direction. So you say that the, like the prophecy where it's talking about Hamashiach, the Lord have anointed me this day. In, in the book of Isaiah, the, the Lord have anointed me in this day to uh, give sight to the blind, to preach to the poor, to loose the bonds of them that been bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the of the Most High. I understood it was a particular people that He came to do those things to. He said nothing about the uh, the Lord that anointed me this day to go to the Pharisees to deal with the religious leaders. The Lord anointed me this day to deal with the devils. And uh, no, it was a specific group of people. He was dealing with them that didn't have eyesight. He was dealing with them that was poor. He was dealing with them that was bound, with them that was downcast and downtrodden. You see? And then you have other verses in the book that might say, now I say that the heir, which is the heir, is the one that inherits the kingdom. As long as he is a child, he's no different. From the slave. And the slave represent the wicked. He said as long as the heir is a child. He's no different from the wicked. Even though he's lord over everything. So this right here teach you. He under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the father. It lets you know. That don't let him touch that stone. It lets you know that that's how you be able to draw. This, ain't, this is not hot. Oh, the oven ain't okay. No, this ain't hot. That's how you know how to it, discern the difference know, between the child who's an heir and the wicked one who ain't never gonna repent. Because you could take a child of the Most High and he be a child in in his maturity. That means he don't understand nothing about the Most High. He ain't no different than the wicked one. So I didn't know how to draw lines of distinction or discern the difference. So I was out there just making a mess. Shalom, John Boy. I was out there making a mess, you know what I mean? And so I had to go back to the drawing board. And then this is what, and this was the end result about it. You know what I mean? So it's like we don't always know. We don't always know. You know, and so we got more where, you know, Messiah said, cast not your pearls unto the swine, but they'll trample on them. Don't give that which is good unto the dogs. But many times we become so zealous with that word that we can't tell the difference between the dog and the child of the most high that just don't know no better. And so we, and then we, we toss in certain places and then when it's not received, or we incur injury to ourselves, then we blame the other people, but in actuality, it's really our fault because we have not allowed or waited on the Most High to give us direction as to what we are supposed to do with, with what it is that we are, that He have given us. So, so these are just some, uh, some natural, simplistic uh, principles. Okay, Mahalia Yasharal says, I have the sin of bitterness. I have helped many but no one have helped. As no one, uh, but I have no. You have no one has helped to come, come to your aid. But I realize that Yahuwah is my only redeemer, and He has me on a journey to refine me. I get bitter, and let's see. Let's get the rest up there. See if I can see the rest. I get bitter and forget that. Well, that's because those are sins of those are bitterness is not a sin of the flesh, it's a sin of the spirit. It may take a little bit more prayer to overcome it, but you got 50% of that battle beat just because you recognize what's ailing you. And you have to look at this as that that the book says that. 
cast your bread upon the waters, and after many days you'll find it again. You may come to the aid of all types of people, and it seems like when you need something, nobody is there. But the reality is, is that if nobody is there, that means that you really don't need it. You see, because in your moment of need, the Most High will cause you all, all, all that things that you have done, He'll cause you to find those things floating on the water at the very hour that you need it. And so you might, you might uh, be glad and be rejoicing that people ain't came to your rescue when you thought you needed them. Because the moment that you really do need, then the Most High's promise is that those things are going to come floating back. I don't care what it was. Was it a kind word? Was it encouragement? Whether it was your money? Whether it was food? Whatever it was, if it was cast out on, out there on the waters. After many days, it's dealing with the issue of, of, of the time of your trial and the time that, that, that uh, your life is in its worst position. He said, when you get there, after many days, you're going to find all those things. They're going to come back, and they're going to begin to sustain you. Sustain you. So be encouraged. We're going to be praying for everyone. All praises. All praises to uh, Prince. Uh, uh, man, I got to learn how to pronounce these names. <laughs> Nikaya. Nikaya Yah. I don't do that. Yeah, I yeah, King yeah. King, All man. praises, man. I just tell her, I said, congratulations, boy. I'm looking forward to seeing her walking around uh, with that belly hanging all out. Let's <laughs> <Ooh. Somebody's laughs> see what them baby. garments going to look like, boy, with that belly hanging on. Nah, baby, the mighty Hebrew, uh, his wife is pregnant. They about uh -huh. to have a new baby. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, all praises, all praises. Yeah, all uh, praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. I see young Gidron is on there. Uh, young Gidron. Gidron, we just got back from Houston two weeks ago. Uh, uh, Gidron, uh, we, I, I just performed Gidron's uh, uh, union ceremony down there in Houston, mighty Hebrew. So, yeah, Gidron is on there. He is, uh, he and his, he just took him a bride, and we... We, we, we blessing the most high for all of our brothers and all of our brothers and our sisters, our married couple, those that's honoring the most high with their life by uh, being joined together. Doing my med, med pass and list. Oh, okay. All right. All praises then. All praises. All praises. I worry a lot this family of mine driving me crazy. Well, you know, that's... You don't have to let them drive you crazy. The only thing you have to do is just live. You see, people drive us crazy when we try to, when we try to alter or change what it is that they're doing. Then they drive us crazy because we get all of this blowback. We get all this blowback. Sometimes your family can try to drive you crazy by trying to change you, but they can't change you. See, if we will hold those things, if we will hold some of these things in our heart, and just allow the Most High to just let our life start living. That means we won't talk so much. And see, when we start talking about our faith, I, I found out I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And we from the tribe of Judah. And we from, when all your family, and you never knew nothing but Christianity. Hey, you know, your mouth is bringing injury to you. Because you're spitting out things that they don't comprehend. They don't understand. Now you part of a cult. You done went off on the deep end. And now everybody is mad or or my whole, you know, I ain't saying you, but I'm just saying. But this is what we get back. Man, they tripping. They are, I don't even go around them no more, man, because they don't. But it really ain't them. It's us. We'll always have to talk about what we do. That's why I say people can reject your words, but they cannot deny your demonstration. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. And just in our spirit, oh, thank you, Mom. Go in the closet if you want to talk to somebody and talk to the Most High. Oh, Lord, thank you. I found that. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. You mean tell me I'm your chosen seed? Oh, that's great. I got purpose in there. I got purpose. Oh, man, I'm about to walk in the footsteps of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, I'm going to be there when we ride on the cloud, when we go through the 12 gates, the pearly gates. One of them got my name on. Oh, that's beautiful. You can talk to the Most High about that. But if you start blabbing off your mouth about that stuff to your family that's lost, then you're going to bring trouble on yourself. So 
That's just the word of wisdom. And just because you ain't blabbing about it, don't mean that it's not real to you. See, many people think that now that I now that I know, I got to show the most high. I got to show the most high that, that I got it by blabbing about it. And if I ain't blabbing about it, I feel like I'm letting the most high down by not talking. But the most high said, I don't need you to talk. I need you to I need you to take what's being in your life and I need you to learn how to love your family without using words. You hear me? Love your family without using words. No, matter of fact, let's go here. Let's say what Hamashiach said. Love not with words, but in deed. That's the equivalent. I need you to learn how to love your family without opening up your mouth. When it comes to things that they don't understand. That's what that is, so. So yeah, man, this is uh so as we said before, we're thanking our brothers and sisters, all of them that came on to confess something. You made a proclamation before the world and the most high that you wasn't no perfect individual, that you was in need of the Father's mercy. And just the very fact that you made that proclamation before the world strips you of your right to pass judgment on your brothers. Does that mean that I can't teach the scripture? Of course not. Because the scripture itself is what judges men. The scripture and the ruach is what judges men and brings men to a place of conviction. That don't mean that you can't teach the scripture. It just means that I as an individual recognize that I'm in need of the Father's mercy. And if I'm in need of the Father's mercy, I recognize my brother is in need of the Father's mercy and my mercy as well. Why do I say he's in need of my mercy? Because any time that you are out front and you know more than your brothers and sisters know, then now you have to exercise a level of patience with them. So now you get to become to, the, uh, to them what the most high is to you. And that's one of the things that we don't see that much. Angela, yeah, Israel, I had one like that. But the people was like what? How she got in emphasis on she like they saw don't. Wait a oh, minute. You I, like you yeah, I'm reading like you get. I feel like I'm reading like Read that. Body. Like, no, I feel like I'm reading like that one pastor. And, and God said, and whosoever, what? Step down into the. It was over. <laughs> so, yeah, you did. Let me read that again. I had one like that. But the people was like, what? How she got an emphasis on she okay. like they saw? Don't. I was nobody. See, that's the way Angela Yah got it written. You gotta, you gotta put it right where I can read it. <laughs> you say like you was no, like you was nobody or something. It don't matter, yeah. And that's what that, that's what happened. That's what happens like that because sometimes our mouth put us there. You know, sometimes it can make people. Uh, you know, it's not that they just want to be terrible, but they don't know what you know, and so you can't make them know what you know. You just gotta go on and live those things out in your life and let that, let that be it. All the time, I definitely need it because I'm not perfect at all. No, none of us are. And we all struggling. We all striving together, you know. But it breaks my heart, man, when I see how brothers and sisters are. And I ain't the only one watching social media. You got a set of brothers and sisters out there, man, that's that's, that's running each other down so bad, talking about each other like dogs blocking each other and threatening each other and all of this type of stuff and all the while say that they do the most high's will. The most high don't operate like that. You know what I mean? The most high don't operate like that. You see? Now, if we, if we devils, that's one thing. But when we start talking about being brothers that just don't agree, sometimes we get our wires crossed right there. Because you can't become a destructive force to another brother simply because he don't agree with you or y'all have a disagreement. That don't mean that y'all enemies. Y'all still brothers. That's different from when you're dealing with a devil that you know is a devil that ain't your brother. Then all of your weaponry and everything can be aimed and used to defeat an enemy. But we got brothers. We got brothers. And we got brothers and sisters that everybody knows. We might have different different lanes of ministry, but we all brothers and sisters. It's just like I told you. Our young prince, mighty Hebrew, was Torah Center. I'm Messianic. 
You see, that's no different if we just warring and fighting constantly with each other. That ain't no good. But you got brothers out here that's doing that. And each one of them was trying to say that they serving the most high. Well, you can't serve the most high like that. Because he already told you, don't do this to your brother. You got to love your brother as you love yourself. So when you start being driven by that love, then you find another way to reach your brother. That's the only thing I'm saying. You don't have to be so blatant. You don't have to be disrespectful. You don't have to threaten people to block them. You don't have to threaten people. Don't call me with this. No, no you just be strategic and find another way to reach them. Yep. Yep. Well, that's what it is. Well, it's meant much of that. Uh, uh, it's much of that, uh, Angela, y'all. Yeah, man, well, you know what, I'm going to credit this one right here to the young Prince Mighty Hebrew. I'm going to credit this to him because he said on there, he said, and I can't get it. I really like to imitate people sometimes, but he's, uh, it's like... Of course, I'm going to tell y'all, boy, a lot of you cats out here in Israel, y'all just spooky as hell, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love them. I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, I love that East Coast accident. But that's what he said. He said, a lot of you cats out here, y'all just spooky as hell. And that's what it is. A lot of these dudes, they, they are so spooky because they so far off base. And they always got the most high in their mouth. Yep. Never, never, and we never will, and he, we never will, because at the appointed time, all things are going to link up like they're supposed to, you see, because you know what, I, like I tell some of these brothers, it don't matter, Taurus Center, Messianic, whatever, like I tell some of them, ah, oh, you talking about Yeshua come riding in the clouds and bringing into the kingdom reign for a thousand years and all of that? All of that, guess what? When he do, it's going to have to be governed by government. That's up under Torah Constitution, the Most High's law that will be reinstituted again. You see, if, when you really start thinking about things for what they really is, you understand that everybody have their own lane to be in. And that's what it is. You got to find your spot and you got to get there. You can't be in everybody else's spot all over the place and think that the Most High is going to bless you. Shalom, Jonathan Carter. That's King Jonathan Carter. And, man, he's out there on the East Coast, too. And every time, and I told him this last time I talked to him, I said, boy, you sound just like my young prince, the mighty Hebrew. They got that same accent and that same strongness in their voice, you know what I'm saying, but I told old Jonathan that, I said, wow, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> see that brother on there right now, Jonathan Carter, uh, Jonathan Carter, you see Prince Char, uh, Char Landon, Yasserala Sr., that's the mighty Hebrew. That's the one that I was telling you that you sound just like. He's out of, um, he's off the East Coast too, man. Y'all got that same accent. Both y'all got them strong voices, man. And I just like bow. Yep. All praises to the most high. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I remember the first time that I heard um uh, heard uh, the young Prince Mighty Hebrew speak, man. I was just blown away, man. I was laid out, man. I was I was laid out, man. I was laid out because I, you know, up until that time, I had never witnessed, I had never in my life witnessed a young man bring forth no, no lesson and no, I ain't even gonna say it ain't, it wasn't a lesson. What is that? that it's another word for a lesson. College term. Oh, uh, come on, Walter. Another word for lesson. College term. Oh, uh, oh, uh, dang it. No, mighty Hebrew, you just said it the other day uh, when you said, uh, when uh, you was talking about the uh, the being of me thing that, uh, what's the name? Uh, lecture, that's what it was, a lecture. <laughs> I, that's what I'm going to call it. I had never heard anybody, no young brother like that, man. It was a lecture. That's what I'm calling it because it was on such a grand level of scholarship. And education that I was exposed to, I was just laid out, man. You know, I, mean? I fell in love with the mighty Hebrew right then in that moment. I knew that he was gonna be somebody important. 
in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? All praises to the Most High for that. And the young prince, man, is uh, y'all ever get a chance to go in and, and watch some of the things that uh, uh, Prince Mighty Hebrew get to do? Uh, prince Charles Landry, y'all ever get some of the chance to go and watch some of his stuff, man? Very profound, very prolific, and uh, and scholarship uh, to the umph degree. Yep. Yep, all praises. All praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. Yep. So, yeah, so I just want to try to redirect brothers and sisters' attention. You know what I'm saying? Let's put our attention on ourselves. We still got another one. Yep. Yep, we still got another one coming up. You know what I'm saying? So this next set of holidays coming up, you can still feel the same way. They still pagan. They still heathen. But you know what? Your family might be extinct. Now, we know the book says that some going to come out by grace. Others will get snatched from the fire. So that means there's going to be more than one way to reach people. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's right. That's right. Now, if you went around there, you start talking about Christmas is pain and heat and all that, and it got dirt through in your face and didn't know nobody wants you around, then you just politely show back up. With a smiling face and a whole new change of mind that I got another different tactic I'm about to try now. I'm going to lay in here like a serpent and wait on something. And now I'm going to sit there like an alligator. You know, an alligator just sit there with his mouth open. He, he, he ain't got to run around chasing nobody or nothing. He just sit there with his mouth open. And, you know, sooner or later, something's going to walk across the palate of his mouth. And all he got to do is close it. So that's kind of the mindset that, that we got to have. Uh, we ought to be relentless in our pursuit okay, of the Most High's finish, righteousness. So yep. So, so all praises to the Most High. Shalom, saints.